Rad Studio is the IDE of choice for C++ development. Quickly build native, mobile, and desktop applications from a single C++ code base and deploy it to Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android. With Rad Studio, user interface design has been made easy with hundreds of pre-built components for cross-platform development. You can easily integrate with popular source control management systems, databases, APIs, and you can make your life easier with numerous third-party extensions. Let Rad Studio do the heavy lifting when it comes to C++ development. Give it a go with a free trial by following the link in the description. Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This video, we are going to talk about the concept of constructors. Now, if you've been following along, you probably know what a constructor is, but we really haven't used them a whole lot. A constructor is a special method that is called when a class is instantiated into an object. So in the example of a user, when we create a specific user, such as user1, there will be a method call to the constructor defined inside of this class. Now here's the thing, when you create a class, such as user, you don't have to create the constructor function, but somehow you can still make a user. So how does that work exactly? Well, the constructor is actually created implicitly meaning we don't actually have to explicitly type it out, it'll automatically be created for us. So that's pretty cool, but the implicitly defined constructor does the absolute bare minimum required to create a new user. What that means, if we wanna do anything extra, we need to explicitly create that method and type out exactly what we want the constructor to do. So when you create a constructor, it's just a method, but there's two special things about it. One is it's the exact same name as the class, and two, it has no return or return type. So the method would literally look like this, and then the code would go in here. So note, same exact name here, and we do not prefix it with a return type. That is how you distinguish the constructor from the other methods in the class. The default constructor is the one with no arguments here, meaning when you say user1, this is the constructor that gets called. There is the option to make custom constructors that take parameters. So in that situation, you can actually change the calling and instead of just doing the default constructor, we can call a different constructor. So it allows us to basically instantiate our user in different ways. For example, we can pass in the person's name here, and you can see in this situation we have two arguments, Caleb, the first name, and Curry, the last name. In this situation, the default constructor would not be hit, a different constructor would be hit, one that would look like this. In this situation, I just called first name F and last name L, just because I was running out of space, but this is a real possible constructor that we could create. And then inside of our code, we can take these parameters and assign them to the class's members. So the class could have members such as first name and last name. So we could do that in here. We could say first name will be assigned the value F and we could do it again. Last name would be assigned the value L. Now here is the thing you need to realize and understand. The implicitly defined default constructor will only happen if we do not define any other constructors ourselves. And this is weird, but it makes sense. Because imagine I wanted to create a class where you had to call a custom constructor. Well, if they always created this default constructor implicitly, then there'll be no way to enforce that. So if I want to enforce that, all I have to do is create the custom constructor and then do not create the default constructor manually. So in this situation, if this was all the code we had, we would only be able to instantiate a user by passing in their first name and last name. So it's a way to basically force required things to be passed in by only having constructors that take arguments. If I wanted the default constructor, which would basically not require us to pass in a first name and last name, I would need to define that explicitly myself by typing it out like so and then I could do whatever I wanted in there. Now the only other thing is the destructor. Very similar to the constructor, but it's called when the object is destroyed. That's going to happen automatically. We don't have to worry about destroying the object manually, but we can, if we want, create a custom destructor. It will also be created implicitly similar to the default constructor, but the destructor we usually have to worry a lot less about. But there might be a situation when you might want to override it to do an output or some logging or to clean something up. In that situation, you do exactly the same thing as the constructor, but you prefix it with a tilde, uh, 
squiggly, what are they called? With a squiggly thingy. And then you just put the class name and the parentheses and the curly braces. And then the code for the destructor goes in here. That'll be called, and if you wanna see that, you could put C out, destroyed, and then every time you create an object and it's destroyed, it would call the destructor and do some output. So I'd encourage you to give that a try. 